come back to our tutorial two on network reduction. In this tutorial, we are going to calculate for current I1, I2, and current I3. So as usual, for us to get current in any of the resistors, we first of all have to calculate for what the total current IT. So the total current is being produced by our voltage source in IT. And from Ohm's law, IT is equal to the total voltage over total resistance. We are given the total voltage. We are left to calculate for what the total resistance. So in this circuit, we have a voltage source which is in a way inside the circuit. So for us to get total resistance, we have to use the idea that current will be splitting, current will be flowing through the same resistance, right? So let's see, the total current is coming from here. When it gets to this junction, the current will split. Some of the current will pass here, which is the I2. Some of that current will pass here. Let's call it I something, let's say I A. So what it means is if current is splitting on this branch and this branch, then any resistor on this branch is what parallel to the resistor here. But we can see that the resistor on this branch is two ohms. But on this side of the network, there are a combination of what resistors. You don't have a single resistor. So for us to get any resistor here, we have to first of all calculate for the equivalent resistance for the resistors here. So that that value will be parallel to these two. The one ohm is still the line in series with what the voltage source. So first of all, we need to calculate the equivalent resistance for the resistance here. So the current I A which splitted on this branch will get to this junction and see here. Then when it got here, some of the current will split on this branch through the four. Some of the current I1 will also split on this branch. Then the I1 will get to this junction. When the I1 gets to this junction, it senses how many branches. Three. That is branch with five ohms. This branch. And what? That branch. So what would the current do? When current gets to a junction, basically it has to split through the branches. But when it gets here, through these three branches, you can see that the one inside here, the middle one, has no resistance. And that is called a short circuit. A short circuit is a branch with theoretically zero watt resistance. Theoretically, you are seeing the resistance of a short circuit is zero, which means there is a resistance on it, but it is what? Zero. For theoretical purposes, the resistance is zero. So when current gets here, our question is, will the current split uh, among these three branches or its own split? Let's use this idea here. Let's say you are on your way going to your house and you get to this junction here. And there are two paths which leads to your destination. All right, there is one path here. There is another path here. But you realize that for this path, there is a resistor there, and that resistor, let's say, is a snake, something which is resisting your what movement. And on this path here, there is no snake here. So, as a normal human being, when you get to this junction and you realize there is a snake here, there is no snake here. You wish to uh, what avoid the snake. That is pass where there is least resistance, because this snake is going to oppose your what movement. So you realize that when you get to this junction, you end up passing. What on this path to your house? That's a normal human being. What you have to do. So the same thing applies to current. When current gets to a junction, I give it has to split. But if the current, after getting to the junction, it sees let's say two uh, branches. On this branch, the resistance there is zero. That is a short circuit. There is no resistance. But on this branch, there is a resistor by let's say zero point five ohms. Anybody. And there's a current 5 amperes coming. When the current gets here, it won't split. Why? Because it senses a branch with what? Zero resistance. So if all the current will end up what passing through that branch, avoiding this resistance. So when we whenever we are doing total resistance, resistance in series and parallel, the resistance which does not have current through them, we don't include them in our total resistance. We only use the resistors which have current through them. So you can have a resistor in a circuit, but current is not flowing through. That resistor becomes irrelevant. It is there, but it's not functioning. So let's come back to our circuit. When the current I1 got to this junction, it senses 5 ohms, 0 and what? 7 ohms. So the current I1 
will end up passing through a, a short circuit. Then it will come back. It is going back to the source. It will come back to this branch. That is what I want. And that I want, let's say this is IC. I want will end up joining with what I see. And you have a current here, let's say ID. ID will come here. And some of the ID will pass with or some this ID getting here will wait for this I2 here. So ID plus the I2 will give us what the total current through the circuit. So this is called conservation of charge. Charges are neither created nor what the strength. The total charge that we have as the current will move through the circuit, then that same value will come back to the source. It won't decrease nor what increase. So if you want to calculate the equivalent resistance for this portion, since we realize no current is going through 5 and 7, it means we are not going to what, include them. They become irrelevant. So this one will go, this one will go. So since we've not started working yet, but we've realized that the current I3 is what? Zero, because the current is not flowing through 7 ohms. So we have I3 to be equal to what? Zero amps. Good. So, what then should we do? We are left with how many resistors on this side? We are left with 3, 3.5 and what? 4. This one is also not there. So we can also draw the circuit again and see what is happening. Let's draw this portion there. Good. So we are ignoring this 5 and this 7 and we have our short circuit here. So this is the 3.5 ohms, the 3 ohms, the 4 ohms here, 25 volts, 1 ohms and what? 2 ohms. So we still want to get the equivalent for this portion here. And we can see the 3.5 and the 3 are on the same brand. They are connected in what C. So let's call the equivalent, let's say R. A. So RA is equal to what? 3.5 plus 3. And that is 6.5 ohms. So let's draw and replace the resistance here by its equivalent. So this one is here. We have our source. We have this 4 here. And the equivalent of these two is what? The 6.5. So 6.5, 4, 25, 1, and what, 2. And let's see, the 6.5 and the 4 are in what, parallel. So let's calculate its equivalent. That is, let's call it RB. So RB is 6.5 by what, 4, over 6.5 plus 4. And that is giving us this is our calculator together. So this is point five by four. So this is point five plus four, and we have fifty two on what twenty one ohms. So now our final circuit can look like this. We have the source here, and we have the equivalent of what? The 4 and the 6.5, which is what? 52 on 21 ohms. So 1 ohm is here, 2 ohm is here, 25 volts. So as we already said, we needed an equivalent resistance here so that we can combine it in parallel with this one. And we now have it here. So, that current is here. So now the 2 and the 52 of 21 are in parallel. So let's call it RC is equal to 2 by 52 on 21 over 2 plus 52 on 21, which is giving us fifty-two on forty-seven. Ohms. So the equivalent of these two is 52 on 47 ohms. So let's draw the last circuit. I have my one, 
my voltage source is here. Now, the equivalent of these two is here. That is what 52 on 47 ohms. This is 1, 25 volts. Volt. So now in this circuit, you can see the total current height generated here is flowing through the 1, and that same current is flowing through the 52 on 47 ohms. So they are in what? Series. So our total resistance RT is equal to 1 plus 52 on 47, which is equal to. Right, so answer plus one is giving us 99 on 47 ohms. So that's our total resistance. So, so we can now calculate for the total current. So the total current IT is giving us for the total voltage 25 over the total resistance 99 on 47. So 25 divided by 99 on 47. And we have 1175 over 99 amperes. It's decimal equivalent is 11.86 recurring. Good. So since we have what the total current, we can use it to find the current in the two ohms and the 3.5 and 3 are in series. So we can use it to find I1 and I2. We already know I3 to be zero. So let's see. For us to get current. I1 and I2, we first of all have to focus on this resistor because this one ohm is here. Uh, one ohm, the resistor is used to be changed by the new it's current. But this total equivalent resistance here, its current is also what the total. To work from this, is a combination of 2 and 52 on 21 in parallel. So we need to get the current for these two resistors using the current divider rule. So let's use the current divider to get current for the two ohms. Let's call it I two ohms. So current for these two ohms, this and this are sharing the current through this. So current for this one is the opposite resistor value, which is 52 on 21 over what? Sum of those two values times the current they are sharing, which is 1175 on 99 amperes. So let's punch. We have 52 on 21 divided by 2 plus 52 on 21 times 1175 over 99. And we have 650 on 99 watts amperes. So current in the two ohms, these two ohms, is 650 on 99. And don't forget, these two ohms is the same two ohms. We have to find the current that is the I2. So, what the current we calculated the I2 ohms is the same as what the I2 we are asked. So, that implies that our I2 is equal to 650 on 99 amperes. It does my equivalent is 6.5 cells recurring. So, we are left with what I1. So, for us to get I1, we first of all have to get the current what, through the 52. On 21. So I think we can clean this side and solve it there. Okay, so current through the 52 on 21 ohms is equal to what? It's equal to the total current they were sharing, which is this one, minus. Current in the two because they were sharing. Then we now have the current, so you can subtract it from their total and we get its current. So it's giving us the total current is 1175 over what? 99 minus current in the two, which is 650 on 99. And we have 1175 over. We have 175 over what? 33 amperes. So the current flowing through this is that. And where from that 52 on 21, we got it from where? Let's move back. Uh -huh. We are just going back to the circuit. We added or we combined the 4 and the 6.5 in parallel. So we have to do the divider again because they are in parallel. So we need to find the current for them. But I'm not interested in the 4. 
because I was not asked to get the carrot in the form. The form was in the question, but we are not asked to get its current. So let's get the current what for the source point five. Because current in the three point five and the three should be what the current in the source point five. So current in the source point five. Let's call it I. So it's 0.5 ohms. So I so it's 0.5 ohms. How then will we calculate? These two are sharing what current? They are sharing this. So current for this one is what? 4 over 4 plus so it's 0.5 times 175 on what? That's three amperes. So we have this multiplied by 4 over 4 plus so it's 0.5. And we have 200. On what? 99 amperes. So the 200 or 99 amperes, its equivalent is 2.02 recurring. So that is the current flowing through what? The 6.5 ohms. And the 6.5 ohms is 3.5 and 3 in series. And we have to find their current in the question. It was I1. You can check. In the question, it was I1. So I1 is the current through this resistance, which is what? 6.5. So we can see the current. I1 is equal to what? Current in the 6.5 ohms, which is equal to 299 amperes. So with this, we've been able to calculate the current I1, which is that current I2, the current through the 2 ohms with this stuff, which is what? 650 or 99. And the current in the 7 ohms, which was I3, and the value is what? 0 amperes. So that's the solution to the problem given. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial.